Hello and welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we're performing a fundamental stock analysis of Synopsys Inc, ticker symbol SNPS. So we're looking at Synopsys today as a subscriber request. Currently, the business is trading for $362.28 per share. And over the last year, their stock price is up 27%, which is dramatically outperforming the S&P 500 over this time frame. We're analyzing the business today to understand what are we missing? What could the market have possibly discovered about this business this year that's led to this kind of outperformance. Over the last five years, Synopsys is compounding their stock price just north of 33% annually. Over the last 10 years, Synopsys is compounding their stock price at 26% annually. So the company is up nearly 10 times in the last 10 years alone. And going back prior to the global financial crisis, over the last 18 years, Synopsys is compounding their stock price at a rate of 18% annually. This business has dramatically outperformed much of the rest of the market over this time frame. So Synopsys is currently trading about $30 below their 52 week high. They're more than $100 above their 52 week low. There's not much short interest around the business and Synopsys is a large business. They have a $55 billion market cap. So for additional background about the business, Synopsys is a provider of electronic design automation software, intellectual property, and software integrity products. EDA software automates the chip design process, enhancing design accuracy, productivity, and complexity in a full flow end-to-end solution. The firm's growth Growing SI business allows customers to continuously manage and test the code base for security and quality. Synopsys's comprehensive portfolio is benefiting from a mutual convergence of semiconductor companies moving up stack towards systems like companies and systems companies moving down stack toward in-house chip design. The resulting expansion in EDA customers alongside secular digitalization of various end markets benefits EDA vendors like Synopsys. So the company serves electronics, financial firms, automotive, medicine, energy, and industrial businesses. Synopsys Inc. was incorporated in 1986 and is headquartered in Mountain View, California. So for our fundamental analysis today, we are performing the select six analysis, taking a checklist style approach of six standard financial metrics to come to a holistic and beginning understanding of synopsis based off of their business fundamentals. So this analysis is an evolving process and it's a work in progress. And so it serves as an opportunity to learn in public. So it will continue to improve and get better over time. With that said, let's get right into today's analysis. Starting things off with metric number one, we want their average return on capital over the last five years to be above 14%. And there are two key reasons for this. The first is that over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is likely to return approximately what its underlying business returns. And these business returns are going to be captured here by return on capital. The second is that the average publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital. So by asking for a benchmark of 14% or higher, we can potentially build in some margin of safety for ourselves based off the overall quality of the business being about twice as good as average. So Synopsys has increased their return on capital throughout this time frame. For the most part, their return returns on capital have just been in the low double digits, although they did earn a 19% return on capital in their most recent fiscal year. Averaged out over this time frame, Synopsys is coming in very close to that 14% benchmark, but just slightly below it with average returns on capital of about 13.5%. So this is going to be an X here on metric number one. Even though their returns on capital are solidly above those of a typical business, they're just slightly below the benchmark we were looking for. And so they're off on metric number one to start our analysis. Next up for metric number two, here we're taking a high level overview of the growth of their business. So we're looking for revenue, net income, and free cash flow growth over the last five years. This metric is all or nothing in nature. Either all three of these are going to be up for this to be a check, or if even one of these is down, this entire metric will be an X. Over this time frame, Synopsys has grown their revenues by about two thirds. So their revenues are up 66%. Their earnings have more than doubled, and their free cash flows have more than 5X. The business has massively grown their free cash cash flows over this time. And so with the business's earnings and their free cash flows growing faster than their revenues, Synopsys has benefited from some operating leverage here. And when we look at their income statement, we can see that both their gross margins and their operating margins have expanded over this time. So this is a check here on metric number two. This is our first check of the day. And it's great to see that the business's growth was led by their free cash flows because free cash flow is really the lifeblood of any business and a business's abilities to produce free cash flows now and until judgment day discounted back by some reasonable interest rate is what that business is ultimately going to be worth. So a business can use its free cash flows to reinvest back in the business, make acquisitions, buy back shares, pay down debt, or pay dividends. So it's great to see such strong growth here for Synopsys. Next up for metric number three, here we're taking the perspective of an individual shareholder in the business by looking at Synopsys 
synopsis on a per share basis. So we're looking for earnings per share growth over the last five years. With their earnings more than doubling over this time frame, we just want to look at what the business has done in terms of their shares outstanding. And synopsis has only marginally diluted existing shareholders throughout this period, only issuing about 1% additional shares outstanding. This means that their earnings per share growth is going to be heavily driven by their earnings. And with their earnings more than doubling, their earnings per share have also more than doubled as well. This is a check here on metric number three. And in their most recent fiscal year, Synopsys earned $6.29 for each share that they had outstanding. Next up for metric number four, here we're looking for something very similar. So we're looking for free cash flow per share growth over the last five years. For very similar reasons to their earnings per share growth, this is also going to be free cash flow per share growth for Synopsys. So this is another check on metric number four. As we learned, the business's free cash flows have more than 5x over this time frame, and they've only issued 1% additional shares outstanding. So in their most recent fiscal year, Synopsys produced $10.46 worth of free cash flow for each share that they've had outstanding. And so, so far through our first four metrics, while we were just very slightly off on metric number one, we have three checks and only one X for Synopsys. Next up for metric number five, here we're evaluating how the business is utilizing debt. So we don't want to be investing in overly levered businesses because during economic downturns, it's overly levered businesses that are going to be at the greatest risk of poor outcomes. So we want their net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short term investments to be below the amount of free cash flow that the business has produced over their last five years. So Synopsys has had negative net debt in all five of these years, and they've actually grown their negative net debt position over this time. This means that after paying off all of their debt, Synopsys is left over currently with $909 million in cash, and the business has been cash flow generative in all five of these years, bringing in about $1.6 billion worth of free cash flow in their most recent fiscal year. So this is a massive check here on metric number five. Not only does Synopsys have a cash cushion on their balance sheet, they've also produced $4.7 billion worth of free cash flow in their last five five years alone. It looks like Synopsys is in a very healthy position in terms of their debt load relative to their abilities to produce free cash flows. Then our sixth and final metric, the big metric of them all, we want their average free cash flow to their total enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this will potentially give us a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury and potentially offer us a reasonable starting point for evaluation of Synopsys. So Synopsys currently has a $54.6 billion total enterprise value. So this is below their market cap because enterprise value takes into account both their market cap and their net debt position. And Synopsys has a negative net debt position. We're using their enterprise value because it's going to give us a more accurate perspective of the business that's more similar to as if Synopsys were a private company. So in our previous metric, we learned that the business has produced $4.7 billion worth of free cash flow in their last five years, meaning that in an average year, the business produces about $950 million worth of free cash flow. So when we divide their $950 million of their average free cash flow by their $54.6 billion total enterprise value, that gives us about a 1.7% average free cash flow to enterprise value yield for Synopsys. So unfortunately, that's going to be significantly below that 5% risk premium we were ideally seeking, and that's less than half of the yield of the 10-year treasury currently. So on an average basis of their free cash flows, this is an X here for synopsis on metric number six. Worth keeping in mind here for the business is that they have been growing their free cash flows very strongly over this time frame. So in their most recent fiscal year, the business produced $1.6 billion worth of free cash flow. So to get a current free cash flow to enterprise value yield for the business, when we divide their $1.6 billion of their most recent fiscal year's worth of free cash flows by their $54.6 billion total enterprise value, that gives us about a 2.9% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield for synopsis. So while that is better than where they've been at historically, that yield would still be coming in below the yield of the 10-year treasury, and that's just over half of that 5% risk premium we'd be seeking. So it still doesn't look like that risk premium would be present here at Synopsys's current valuations. Just because this is an X here on metric number six doesn't mean that you're going to toss this business out in its entirety. This type of analysis is not financial advice, and it's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. This is just one of our six metrics, and while these metrics are simple, when they're combined together, they can be very powerful, and we've still got some interesting aspects of the business left to cover. Then everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason to analyze Synopsys, which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to come to a potential fair intrinsic value for Synopsys. So a discounted cash flow model is just like any other model in any other discipline. Its outputs are going to be sensitive to its inputs. So here we're starting with Synopsys's current free cash flows per share, and we're using historical growth assumptions for how the business has grown these free cash flows, dating back all the way till 1990, in order to project these out into the future for Synopsys 
synopsis and give us a baseline projected estimate for the company. So if we assume that the business can grow their current free cash flows at a rate of about 9.5% annually for the next 10 years, then we assume in the 10 years out after that, that this growth rate is cut in half. So we'd be projecting 20 years out into the future in total. So it's up to you to do your own homework here to determine whether or not these historical growth assumptions are going to be accurate and applicable going forward for synopsis. If we add in the company's tangible book value, which gives us an approximation of the company's tangible net worth, and we were ideally seeking a 15% rate of return from the company, Company, which is the rate of return that Warren Buffett is looking for from his investments, in addition to his margin of safety requirements, which will vary industry to industry and business to business based off the dynamics of the industry and a business's relative competitive positioning inside of that industry. Then based off of today's valuations of the business, it looks like a potentially fair intrinsic value for Synopsys is only around $124 per share. So this would be significantly below what the company's stock price is right now, down about $240 from their current valuations and about a third of what their current stock price is. Please keep in mind the major caveat that a discounted cash flow model is based off the predictability of a business's future free cash flows. And while Synopsys has tended to have a pretty predictable business in its past, that may not be potentially accurate for the business going forward, especially as the business's free cash flows have grown so much in their recent years. Again, it just highlights the need to really dig in and do your own work on the business. So please be mindful of the fact that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with the properly licensed and registered legal and financial professionals. So in just a minute, we'll talk about our summary for synopsis, but we have to address something first. What are some of the qualitative aspects of this business, especially those that support the key points for either a potential long or a potential short thesis of synopsis? So starting with some of the key points around a potential long thesis for the business. Number one, Synopsys provides mission-critical EDA software, having relationships with all major domestic chip designers and retention rates of approximately 100%. Number two, the growing software integrity business enables a larger total addressable market for Synopsys and addresses expanding demand for real-time identification of security vulnerabilities across the entire software development life cycle. And number three, secular tailwinds in chip design, such as 5G, Internet of Things, AI, and others should increase demand for EDA tools and support growth for Synopsys. Then for some of the key points around a potential short thesis for the business, number one, geopolitical tensions with China and a growing EDA tools industry in the country could have an impact on Synopsys' ability to do business in the region and have an impact on Chinese market share. Number two, as Synopsys grows its software integrity business, it competes in a new and highly competitive application security testing market against more singularly focused players like Veracode and check marks. And number three, customer concentration and interoperability of EDA tools pose a risk that influential customers could switch to a different vendor with relative ease, which could impact long-term growth. So hopefully that offers a balanced perspective around some of the key qualitative aspects of the business. Now it's time for our summary. So in summary, Synopsys checks the box on four out of our six metrics today, meaning that the business looks like a strong candidate for further research. Synopsys earns average returns on capital that are solidly above those of a typical business, but fall just short of the benchmark we look for. Their revenues, earnings, and free cash flows have grown by quite a bit in the past five years, and the business's margins have expanded over that time. They've only marginally diluted shareholders by about 1%, so the business has grown strongly on a per share basis as well. Then Synopsys is sitting on quite the cash cushion, and they're pretty cash flow generative as well, so it looks like their balance sheet is in a healthy position. However, when we looked at their current and their average free cash flow to their enterprise value and compared that to the yield of the 10-year treasury, it didn't look like Synopsys was offering that potentially attractive risk premium on either one of those bases. Then as a note, Synopsys does not pay out dividends. And finally, performing a discounted cash flow analysis of Synopsys. If you've done the work and you believe that these historical growth assumptions are going to be accurate and applicable going forward for the business, then it looks like from today's valuations of the company that a reasonable fair intrinsic value for Synopsys is only around $124 per share. So that again is significantly below what their current stock price is at. However, it's worth being aware that there are reasons why this may not be potentially accurate and applicable for the business. So it's worth reiterating that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with your financial advisor. This analysis instead serves as a beginning and holistic understanding to help you determine whether it's worth your time and energy to dig in and learn more about Synopsys. One resource that will definitely help you stay up to speed with what's going on in the market and help you learn more about the business is Seeking Alpha. 
Checking out Seeking Alpha directly supports the channel as I'm part of their affiliate program. So most of you probably know Seeking Alpha as a source of community written articles on different stocks. But over the past little while, they've actually become a lot more than that with their new offering, which is Seeking Alpha Premium. Premium has a number of different features where you can track buy, hold, and sell ratings on your favorite stocks. These ratings are from the Seeking Alpha community, Wall Street analysts, and Seeking Alpha's algorithm. You can see earnings call transcripts, investor presentations, SEC filings, and press releases all in one place. You can add your own margin of safety targets and get alerts for when your favorite stocks hit that level. You can get unlimited access to Seeking Alpha articles, and you can tailor your reading experience based on the type of investor you are. You can get 10 years of financial data on any stock to help you with your analysis. You can also import your portfolio into your Seeking Alpha dashboard to make researching easier. And if that didn't convince you, the best thing is that an annual plan is only 119 bucks. That's just 33 cents per day through my referral link down in the description below. Normally premium is $239, but if you use my link, it's 50% off. So check it out if you're interested. So through this deeper research, you'll learn more about the qualitative and the quantitative aspects of the business, and you'll likely be able to determine for yourself what a reasonably appropriate, fair intrinsic value for Synopsys will be. So as a value investor, you're ultimately trying to conduct this research as if you're going to own 100% of a business, and you can truly understand the ins and outs of that company, understanding what's important and what's not important for that business going forward. So with that said, that's it for today's fundamental stock analysis of Synopsys Inc., ticker symbol SNPS. We looked at the business today as a subscriber request. And with Synopsis checking the box on four of our six metrics, it looks like the business is strongly attractive for further research. So I'm happy to analyze the company. And if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about Synopsis with me and have a great day.